Hello class, this is section 5.6 and in this video we are going to demonstrate the use of the minimization principle to estimate the smallest eigenvalue of a sturm louisville problem. Here we have a pretty run-of-the-mill sturm louisville problem with uh, Neumann boundary conditions on one side and Dirichlet boundary conditions on the other. And we'll see how we can put the Rayleigh quotient to good use here. First, we're going to observe the full sturm louisville equation. It's written over here in brown. And we need to figure out what the p, the q, and the sigma are. And just looking at our equation, it's clear that we have px as just the constant function 1, that we have qx as 0, there's no, there's no fix term by itself, and we have sigma x as 1, the constant function 1. And this allows us to figure out what we need to plug in to our Rayleigh quotient. And once we plug in px equals 1, qx is 0, and sigma x is 1 to our Rayleigh quotient, this is what we get, this is all that's left. And remember that u obeys the same boundary conditions that phi does, du dx of 0 as 0, and we have u of 1 is 0. Oh, and of course, um, the a and b are 0 and 1. Let me fix that really quickly. There you go. But notice this first term over here on the numerator. When you plug in 1, x equals 1, the ux disappears. When you plug in ux equals x equals 0, the second term disappears. So this actually just goes away and makes our equation a lot simpler to, to handle. So we need to figure out what the u are. And remember, the whole point of the minimization principle is that u does not need to solve the sturm louisville equation. But also, u does satisfy the boundary conditions, and we also insist that u is continuous. And this is something that we did not mention, but is also important. The closer our u is to the actual eigenfunction of the smallest eigenvalue, the better our estimate for that eigenvalue will be. So obviously in this situation we don't know what the eigenfunction is, but we can make some intelligent guesses. In particular, uh, phi1x, the first eigenfunction, the eigenfunction for the smallest eigenvalue, has no zeros in 0, 1, the interval 0, 1. That is one of the properties of the regular sturm louisville problems which we discussed. And therefore, we should pick a u that never hits zero in the interior either. So given these motivations, let's try to find an appropriate u. So we have these boundary conditions, of course, and we have to obey them. And I'd like to first sketch out what our u would look like. So it can't hit zero in the interior of the 0, 1 interval. We know that it's going to be 0 at 1, and we know that its derivative is going to be 0 at 0. So maybe we should do a function in two parts. So let u of x be x squared initially. Now this works out really well to start with because the derivative of x squared is 0 is 0, so that satisfies the first boundary condition. But it clearly does not satisfy the second boundary condition because u of 1 is u of x, u of 1 squared is 1, obviously, so you don't get 0 like we need to. So we're going to have to do this in two parts. So let's say this is x squared for x in 1, uh, 0 half. So from 0 to 1 half, we are going to have x squared. So let's say up to here. And 1 half squared is obviously 1 quarter. So this point here is going to be 1 half. 1 quarter, and we now we're going to have to find a way to get the function back to 1, and remember that the u has to be continuous. So let's just draw a straight line between 1 half and 1. 
So we need to figure out what the u is for the second case. So it's going to be a straight line, so it's going to be of the form ax plus b. And for x in half to 1. So we need to figure out what a and b are. Well, we know two of the points of the line. The line hits the point 1, 0, and it hits the point 1 half, 1 quarter. And based on uh, what we know from algebra, we can figure out what, that, what a and b should be. And they are a equals 1 half and b equals minus 1 half, I believe. Yes, that's right. So we can see that the slope of the line is going to be minus 1 half. So this has to be a minus 1 half over here. And then we can plug in um, x equals 1, y equals 0 to figure out that the b has to be plus 1 half. So there you have it. So we have a function that is going to be equal to x squared to start with and equal to the line minus half x plus half for the second half of the interval. This solution never touches zero in interior despite my terrible drawing and probably looks a decent amount like the actual eigenfunction. So this will probably give us a good estimate. And it's also continuous. So again, we, I want to remind you that we never verify that this function solved the sturm louville equation, but that's not necessary for our estimate. And all that's left is to plug in u in this Rayleigh quotient formula, and we're done. We have an estimate for the smallest eigenvalue. So we'll just move this down here. We have to worry about two integrals, the one on the numerator and the one on the denominator. So let's first figure the first one out. And on the numerator, we have the integral of the derivative squared. And since we have our u defined in two halves, it's going to be a good idea to split this integral to two as well. So this is going to be from zero to one half, du dx squared, and this is going to be added to the second half, also du dx squared dx. And of course, the u's are different from these two intervals. From zero to half, we have x squared. The derivative of x squared is 2x, so we have 2x squared dx, and from 1 to half, we are going to have minus half x plus half as our u, and so our derivative is just going to be minus half. This is going to be 1 half minus half squared dx. Both integrals are super easy to compute. 1 6 for the first integral and 1 8 for the second which when added together just gives us 7 over 24. So that will be our numerator term. And for the denominator, we do the same thing. We split the function into 0 half and half 1, since they are defined, the function is defined differently in both of those intervals. So in the first interval, we have x squared. In the second interval, we have that line. And this is going to be equal to x squared squared dx from 0 to 1 half, and it's going to be minus half x plus half squared dx from half to 1. Again, uh, both of these are very elementary integrals to compute. We get 1 over 160 over 1 over 96. And when we add those together, we get 1 over 60. So when we look again at our Rayleigh quotient, we find that our q of u has 7 over 24 in the denominator and 1 over 60 in the numerator. And we can just write that down. So this will be our upper bound for our lowest eigenvalue. And we have showed that our lowest eigenvalue is roughly 17.5.